Oh boy. <laughs> I'm an alcoholic. My name's Roy. Hi, Roy. And by the grace of a power greater than myself, I have not found it necessary to drink today. Stop making fun of me, Nikki, over there. <laughs> now, before I begin, Jay was talking about the big book and throwing big books. As you've noticed, nobody sat in that first row. He's right-handed, except if they were out of reach. So, uh, like Jay, I went to my first AA meeting in 1984. So I've now been in AA for 29 years. However, if I don't have a drink by Tuesday, then it will be 23 years and six months that I've actually been away from alcohol. The last 23 years and six months, not the first 23 and six. And why was that? Because, um, and before I uh, begin my share, uh, you know, when Phil uh, talked about this topic, <laughs> that ain't in the book, I started laughing and I was trying to figure out how the heck are we going to do this? And of course, like a good alcoholic, it didn't really start till this morning at about <laughs> 9 a.m. I was at a conference in Manhattan. I'm on my phone under the table finding websites for useless slogans that don't work in AA. <laughs> it's actually 252. You can look it up. But now that all your phones are off, you can't look it up now. Um, but when I was talking to Jay on uh, what was it, Wednesday night, yeah, on Wednesday night, and we said, "How are we going to do this?" And one of my ideas was that maybe we can do this, you know, like a one-act play or a skit or something, and you know, I'll be the newcomer and he'll be the grouchy old timer. He kind of has a he kind of has a, has a natural flair for doing that. Sort of thing. And uh, and he's okay. Let's do that. No, no, let's not do that. And, you know, evidence of God working in mysterious ways that this thing just came together. And as I started going through this stuff at this conference, you know, and it was pretty serious. It was a New York State conference. They'd invited 12 people from all over New York. My name accidentally got onto that list. And, uh, <laughs> and it's supposed to be serious. And this is about people's licenses and credentials and who can go to jail and who can't. And, and I'm, I'm giggling and smoking. And people are wondering, what the heck's going on here? But I kind of put something together. And there were certain slogans that stood out for me from my own experience. And uh, as I started uh, reading them, I actually had to write them down and uh, see if I could put them in some kind of chronological order as it weaved through my experience uh, in recovery. And when I went to AA the first time in 1984, I was under the influence of alcohol. The only way I'd go to an AA meeting was after I'd had a few drinks. So I had a few drinks, and I went for a meeting, and I have no idea what they said. But at the end of the meeting, they came out with uh, the first slogan that Jay talked about. Well, kid, you got to put the plug in the jug. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, I've been trying that every Monday morning <laughs> for the last few weeks, and uh, the plug keeps coming out. <laughs> and then years later, when I read the big book, sorry, Jay, I'm going to quote the big book. Go ahead. <laughs> On page 39 of the big book, it says, the actual or potential alcoholic with hardly an exception will be absolutely unable to stop drinking on the basis of self-knowledge. So I can sit in meetings till I'm blue in the face or blue in my, uh, other parts of my anatomy. <laughs> and I can go to counselor school and learn everything I can about alcoholism addiction and everything else. And it's not going to keep me sober. So... I kept drinking and I kept going back. I didn't really go voluntarily. My grandmother would force me to go. She would cry. Uh, and then she'd call my boss, which really sucked. And then he would force me to go. That's how I got forced to go. And they say, oh, you again? Remember your last drunk. That was a great one. <laughs> Remember your last drunk? Yeah, it was great. I went out on Saturday evening. I have no idea what happened. I 
I lost various uh, articles of clothing along the way. I woke up in my own vomit and my own urine. At least I hope it was my own vomit. But damn it, it was so much fun. I don't remember that. I'm sorry, Jay. I have to quote the big book again. But it says on page 24 of the big book, and they put it in italics so it would get my attention. It said, um, I'll be unable to bring into my mind with sufficient force the memory of the suffering and the humiliation of even a week or a month ago. Case in point, December 10th, 1989, I crashed a motorcycle. Seven days later, I woke up from a coma. Two days after that, day, a week and a month, I pulled the bloody tubes out of my hands, took a discharge against medical advice, crossed the street, had a couple of drinks, rented another motor motorcycle. All this with 36 stitches in my head, my neck and a collar, and eight compressed vertebrae in my back. Remember your last <laughs> fat chance. So off I went again for a few more episodes of destructive drinking. And this, oh, you got a wife? Ah, I almost had a wife back then. You know, after 10 years of, when are we getting married? Next year, honey. After 10 years, she gave up. So she was another person who would force me to go for meetings. This almost wife person. And they said, oh, you again? We got a new slogan for you. It's called the seven T's. Anyone heard the seven T's? Maybe that's only in other parts of the world. Take the time to think things through. <laughs> what? I need two shots of tequila just to say that again. Take the time to think things through. <laughs> Holy cow. So wait a minute. Uh, okay, so if I go out drinking and if I don't hang out with people like Jay, I might get home without vomit and urine. <laughs> Who's got time to think all those things through? Yeah, take the time to think things through. That's 252 helpful slogans in AA. <laughs> Page 24. The actual or potential alcoholic. You're not going to be able to have the power to remember. Think things through. Take the time to think things through. My taking time was... Whom can I call? Which after our place is open? What can I have before I go drinking? What will I need when I wake up? I anyone heard of Dr. Bob? I love him. He's my favorite story in the big book because I got my identification there. He was a proctologist by profession. And he says in his story that he would wake up enough every morning and take enough pills to stop the shakes, to shove his fingers wherever proctologists shove them, <laughs> to make enough money to drink at night. And that's my story. Mm. Thank God it was Dr. Bob and not one of those old timers say, don't talk about drugs in the meeting. Anyway, so after taking the time to think things through, I thought that since I'm only 22 or 23 years old, I think that this time I'm going to be, I'll be able to control and enjoy the situation. Now that's an actual quote from page 23 of the big book that you can use. And uh, so I went out and I tried to control, didn't work. I tried to enjoy, I did to some extent, because you don't remember. Later you guys told me that's called a blackout. That's why I enjoyed it so much. And then I'd be back again. And now we'd been through the grandmother, the boss, the almost wife. And now, you know, there was this man in a long black dress. Huh? He was not dressed in drag, he was a judge. <laughs> he told me to go back to a meeting. I was worried there. And <laughs> by this time, I'm now a couple of years older. Now we move forward to 1986. I've lost my job in Swiss Air. Uh, I'm about to lose the job in Transworld Airlines. You know, the fiancé is getting a little uh, not too happy. We are now into year eight of me saying next year, honey. And uh, they said, oh, you again? They said, remember when? Remember when what? 
Remember when you came in here at age 22 and you had that job and you had those bikes and you had... No. Well, try and remember. Yeah, but you know what? I'm unable to bring into my mind with sufficient force the memory of the suffering and the humiliation of even a week and a month ago. Well, don't worry. You are exactly where God wants you to be. I said, you guys got to be kidding me. What do you mean? This is where God wants me to be? At an AA meeting? Almost unemployed, almost unengaged, almost broke, almost homeless, and almost without a driving license? What kind of insanity is this? They said, look, no pain, no pain. No pain. <laughs> I said, look, I much prefer my own slogan, which is, no pain, no pain. Yeah. <laughs> and I have just the solution for no pain, no pain. Go out and do some drinking, no pain. And if you wake up in pain, use Dr. Bob's solution early in the morning, still no pain. And then go back to work, and then you get into trouble. And then you go back and they'll say, oh, put the plug in the jug, remember your last drink, uh, take the time to think things through, remember when, and you are exactly where God wants you to be. Oh, so God wants me to be a relapser who's going to show up every three months saying, uh, I'm back again. Now, you know what, Roy, the real problem is? The real problem is that you're in denial. <laughs> I said, I thought that was a river in Egypt. <laughs> and they said, no. That is, you don't even know I am lying. D-E-N-I-A-L. I said, really? Uh, I'm not denying it, man. I'm not denying it. I'm going out. I'm trying to drink like all my other friends. I'm trying to drink like all those other people in my family. They still have their jobs and their girls <coughs> and their wallets and uh, their watches. And they remember where they parked their motorcycles. And uh, they, they actually know they're going back to work in the morning because they still have their job. I never knew in the morning. I said, oh, my God. They said, well, don't worry. We have a wrench here to fit every kind of nut that walks in. I said, oh, no, <laughs> hey. <laughs> now they were really, now they were really beginning to tick me off. Because till this time, up to this point in life, they were just talking about my behaviors. Now they were starting to question my mental faculties. You're calling me a nut? You have a wrench to fit every nut? What do I have to do? You got to get sober and stupid. <laughs> you know, if you guys were not bad before, you're now adding insult to injury. First you called me a nut, and now you're telling me I have to become stupid? What kind of program are you guys running over here? <laughs> they said, well, you'll have to get sober in, in order to find out what kind of program we are running over here. I said, okay, what do I need to do? Oh, uh, what does it say? <laughs> Don't drink and go to meetings, god damn it. <laughs> One minute. Let's get this clear. If I knew how to don't drink, and if I had the power how to don't drink, why the hell would I need to go to your bloody meetings? I would just not drink. And I would do whatever else people that don't drink do. Whatever they do. I don't know what they do. What do they do? Don't know. I don't know either. So how can you tell me don't drink and go... And hold on. By the way, this is not published by AA. This is published by a completely different company called The Grapevine. It's separately incorporated. It's nothing to do with AA. So they play the tape too. Cancel my subscription. <laughs> So, so 
anyway by this time there was uh, by this time there was pressure being brought to brought to bear now i and now this now i reached a really bad part of my my career because airlines started encouraging me i used to work in the travel business and they started encouraging me to seek other employ transfer airlines would say i think it's time you went and work for pan am they wanted them to be out of business <laughs> and then pan am would say no no we think you need to go and work with kuwait airways and they are out of business too <laughs> and i walked my way down the list until even ethiopian airlines wouldn't hire me in the end <laughs> so i said okay don't drink and go to meetings the financial pressure was on the romantic pressure was on the legal pressure was on the family pressure was on so i said uh, how often do i have to go for meetings well a meeting a day keeps the bottle away <laughs> so i need to go to meetings every day why because 7 days without a meeting makes one week <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm going to go to a meeting every day all 7 days and at that meeting i'm going to hear the following put the plug in the jug that didn't work Remember your last drunk I couldn't remember take the time to think things through I can't even tie my shoelaces together that's why I have shoes without laces um, remember when remember when what I can't and you're exactly where God wants you to be making meeting 7 days a week and no pain no gain because you're in denial and we'll fit your nut with our wrench okay how often do I have to do this well Try it for 90 days. Make 90 meetings in 90 days, uh, and then what? <laughs> then you do it again. <laughs> Why do I have to do it again? <laughs> Because meeting makers make it. <laughs> uh, what exactly do meeting makers make? Meetings. Meetings. <laughs> so. I said look this is not working man we are now up to 1988 I'm now through four jobs I'm through a broken engagement I've now had my first enlarged liver you know uh, I'm working my way down the uh, I'm working my way down the food chain uh, they said well just keep coming back it works if you want it Okay so meeting makers work make it and if i keep coming back it will work if i work it what is it put the plug in the jug <laughs> oh but you know what whatever you guys have told me so far hasn't really worked i don't think you guys have your act together <laughs> well uh some of us are sicker than others <laughs> So one minute, hold on a second. For four freaking catadoodling years, I've been in and out of your goddamn meetings, putting plugs in jobs and plugs in other things, and absolutely drinking and losing jobs. And you're telling me to keep coming back, and now you tell me that some of you are sicker than others. Why are you sicker than others? They said because we have secrets, and we are only as sick as a secret. <laughs> So how the heck am I to know? How am I to know which of you are less sick than the others? Enter J. Stick to the winners. Oh my God! And how do I know who the winners are? Keep it simple, stupid. If you came for meetings every day. And if you made meetings then you would know who the winners were. Why? Because winners are those who got up earlier than do you and haven't had a drink today. It doesn't matter that they, you know, were all cheated and swindled and connived and this, but they didn't drink today. So they are winners and you should definitely learn to do what they are doing. I learned a lot. And I drank a lot. 
I'm really not getting this. I am really not getting this. They said, don't worry. Just bring the body and the man will follow. Guess what? Unfortunately, I took the previous suggestion of being sober and stupid. And because I was stupid, my mind didn't get the message. So my body kept coming, but my mind said, go drink, go drink, go drink, go drink. So uh, this was getting to be a really, uh, it was really getting me in all kinds of uh, being bent out of shape. And I said, you know, on the few occasions that I've actually been sober at some of these meetings, some of you made some oblique references to this program. They said, yes, we have a simple program for complicated people. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm looking at this simple program for complicated people. Let me get this. Okay. Powerless, I have to admit by this time. Uh, you say I'm simple, stupid, and I'm a nut, but I don't think I'm insane, so I don't need step two. Uh, I don't believe in God, so that's out. There's nothing wrong with me, so step four is out. Uh, step five has God, so that is out. Uh, step six has God, so that is out. Uh, step seven has God, so that is out, and I have no shortcomings anyway. <laughs> ah, step eight. I can work some kind of step eight. I have a long list of people I would like to harm. <laughs> ah. Step nine, I have a long list of people that owe me amends. Uh, there's nothing wrong with me, so step 10 is out. 11 is God, so that is out. And step 12, I'm doing. You said keep coming back and meetings a day, and I'm there. That's great. They said, no, no, but you're not doing the program we told you to. I said, yes, I did. I was listening. You said, you got it? Take what you want and leave the rest. <laughs> they said, and they said, no, you are confusing what we said. I said, no, you said this is a selfish program. So I'm taking what I want and you guys can keep the rest. <laughs> And then they said, you know what, Roy, you got to push. I said, push? What the heck is push? They said, you got to pray until something happens. Uh, I'm not sure I want to pray until something happens. Why not, Roy? Because you said, what goes around, comes around. And if what I've been doing to people out there is going to come around, and that's the something that's going to happen? No way I am praying until that something is going to happen to me. Why not? Because you guys also told me, be careful what you ask for. You might get it. So those were really the slogans that I tried really hard to follow and emulate. I failed at it. Relapse was definitely part of my program. Thank God I'm now following this program and I haven't had a drink for a little over 23 years. So, what actually did work for me was three slogans. I found actually only three slogans in the movie. First things first. I'm a freaking alcoholic. I can't stop drinking. And I need to address that first. And in order to address that first, I had to get a sponsor, get, through, get him to help me get through these steps exactly as Jay, Jay said. The second thing I had to do was live and let live. It didn't matter who fired me, who dumped me, who whatever, 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 whatever. There were mechanisms in place for me to live and let live. Take inventory, make amends, help others, and so on and so forth. And the third thing that I was asked to do was easy does it. Easy does it was not, okay, take your time. It's one step a year. Oh, that was another slogan. Oh, yeah. Step a year. <laughs> we forgot that one. 
easy does it was don't beat yourself up just do the steps do them to the best of your ability good old dr bob he's so underrepresented in the everything is bill w this bill w that anyway dr bob who got sober in 1935 and died in 1950 in those 15 years he took 5000 people through the process and it's there it's in a story it's in the squiggly writing on top and um, <laughs> that works out to an average of 333.36 recur recurring a year i think he took some sundays off <laughs> how exactly did he take 300 people through the year if you go to page 263 of the big book and you read the story of earl t which means if you got one of those small free big books at meetings like linbrook give it away to someone else and buy a big book <laughs> i was just informed by gso new york that big books are now cheaper than a pack of cigarettes so go buy a big book and um, so easy does it was don't beat yourself up do the program uh i like what jay ended with where he said um, <coughs> however these slogans made their way into our fellowship or whichever fellowship they came from most of them if not all of them have originally come from position of uh, good intentions where they want to help let me scare this guy by saying this let me help this guy by saying that so this uh, workshop would not be complete if i didn't throw in my own slogan Oh, to add to the confusion <laughs> and if anyone had to add a slogan which isn't in the book i heard a wonderful one which my friend uh, brian says often enough a 12 step meeting without 12 steps is like a steakhouse without steak thanks for listening <laughs> hey